Jesus, greetings, everybody. You know, after that powerful time of worship, uh, there's one line that um, jumped out to me. Uh, I trust that you make that as your theme song for Christmas. In one line of that song, it says that the Lamb has overcome. We have a reason to sing hallelujah. Don't forget that. Because the Lamb has overcome, you are an overcomer. And in whatever issues and whatever deals that you are dealing with, you are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. So you have a reason to sing hallelujah. Are you ready to, re to receive God's word? And then let's go into that. And this morning, last week, we talked about peace. This decision to embrace peace. This morning, uh, my topic is on this the reason, the season to embrace forgiveness. Do you know, we don't normally associate the doctrine of forgiveness at Christmas time. We sing about joy and peace and light. But forgiveness. With everything that goes on in our world today, um, this message of forgiveness, it's like an uphill climb to get people to understand the message of forgiveness preached during the Advent season. We live in a world today, whether it's in our country, in Canada, the US, all around the world, there's a lot of hurting people. They're people with a lot of pain. And people are mad at people. And, and, and you stand up and preach on forgiveness. And I pray that the Lord will, as it's been prayed already, that the anointing will fall afresh upon this place and the presence of the Lord will fill this auditorium. That you will get the message that you will become single-mindedness, single-minded in your focus when it comes to this area of forgiveness. Because I know it's a struggle to get this message across when there's a lot of hurting people all over the world. Race is against another race. Religion against another religion. Family against family. And you stand up and you talk about that. And on top of that, we don't, and one of the reasons we do not associate forgiveness, the doctrine of forgiveness with Christmas is because sometimes we are so focused on tradition when it comes to the Advent season. Tradition has become the main focus, like it's the focus is on angels and shepherds and the wise man and the leading character of the Advent season, which is Jesus Christ, appears far off in the background. So tradition has become a main focus. On top of that, commercialism has become a focus. The real message of Christmas, which is Jesus Christ, is lost in the maze of adornment and tinsels hanging around the Bethlehem event. In fact, Rudolph and the Santa with his reindeer has taken the place of Jesus Christ our Lord. Commercialism. Liberalism has become part of the focus of the Advent series or season because the angels, the shepherds, and the wise men has been far removed. The identity of Jesus Christ has been questioned. Who is he? Was he really born of a virgin? Was he really the Messiah? Or is this just some made up story? And so that is why you find that it's a struggle to get this message across because we are all clouded with all of this other stuff and, 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 and relevantly today because of the hurt. We live in a broken world with broken people. And they're trying to make sense of their existence in a, pro in a broken world. I, and, and I'm not making this as a political position here, but I was watching the news to see the face of a young girl out of Turkey this morning. 
I just want to have a place where I can dream. I just want to live in a place where there are goals, where, where I can be able to be a good citizen of that place. But with all of this happening, I want to let you know right off the bat that doctrine of forgiveness is just as much a part of the Christmas message as peace and joy and light. And it really is appropriate that we talk about it during this season. And, and I think this probably is what the Apostle John has in mind when he said that Christ became flesh and he moved into our neighborhood. He became flesh and blood, real person, and he moved into your neighborhood and he became associated with each one. And yet at the same time, he left the crib and went to the cross and was nailed there. Right there on the cross, he was suspended between heaven and earth. And truly, when you think about the Advent season, ladies and gentlemen, think of it in this way, that he was born to die. That's the full message of Christmas. Born to die. That's a counterculture. And all of this took place as the, 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 the writer to Matthew, Matthew said to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophets. And when Galatians chapter 4 jumped in and the Galatians chapter 4 said, in the fullness of time, when everything was ready, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that the people who are under the law can be adopted into the family of God. So you are an overcomer because the Lamb has overcome. You have a reason to sing hallelujah at Christmas time. And I thank the Lord because you see without this event as has been already mentioned, there would be no opportunity for me to receive forgiveness. That girl in Turkey was asked, what if they will not grant you a visa to go to the U.S.? She said, then maybe I'm lost then. That's what she said. Then I'm lost. Luke tells us, for the Son of Man have come to what? To seek and to save that which was lost. There will be no ultimate forgiveness that God will provide. And then it will be impossible for me to forgive you. And for you to forgive me. Because we have not experienced full forgiveness. The ultimate forgiveness. That the Christmas story is centered around. And that is why Matthew tells us. As the angel appeared to Joseph. And said she will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. What does Jesus mean? That he will save his people from their sins. And all of this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophets from long ago to the time Galatians chapter 4 said in the fullness of time when everything that the prophet has prophesied came into reality. God sent forth his son. The reason for that is ladies and gentlemen don't forget this because you every individual sitting in this auditorium every one of you matter to God. So during this Christmas season, let not only focus on the baby Jesus in the manger, but please see the Christ of Calvary. Let's not sing about the birth only, but we must sing about his blood that was shed on the cross for you and for me. Let us not only bow at his cradle, but we must also bow at his cross. From the manger to Calvary, from his birth to his death, from his cradle to his cross. That's the Christmas message. That is God's way of expressing how much he loves you and I because you matter to him. And in fact, do you know what the word forgiveness means? From a biblical standpoint, it is actually God's love and God's grace in action. That is what the word forgiveness is. You may say the most wonderful word in the English dictionary, in the Christian dictionary, is love. The word I would say to you that the most important, beautiful word in the English, in the Christian dictionary, is the word forgiveness. 
Because forgiveness is God's love in action. We all need forgiveness. And without forgiveness, there is no hope of reconciliation between us and God, and certainly between us and other people. So for this season, if this is going to count for something significant in your life, it's the season to embrace forgiveness. Let me suggest a couple of choices that I hope will make sense for you. Because you've got to understand that when our father Adam and Eve sinned, something happened to the human nature. When they disobeyed God, the fellowship between man and God was separated. And death was introduced into the human family. There's separation of fellowship with God that there's death in the family. There is no way we can do anything for us to be able to bring that back. And this is the reason why it's hard to forgive others because we haven't probably received forgiveness sometimes. It's hard for me to forgive you because I have never experienced forgiveness upon my own life. And I want to just get, suggest a couple of choices that I hope you will make. And here's the first one in terms of forgiveness. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. If you've never done so. And I want to just read from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 7 to 8. This is, I, I love this, this verse. It's a powerful verse. It says this. <clears throat> In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. I want to just pull all of that verse apart. When it comes to understanding forgiveness for your sins, there's three realities out of that verse that I want to pull out for you to understand God's forgiveness for you. And here's the first one. We have offended the holy God. In that verse, here's what it says. Mark with me, follow together with me. It says, in him we. We. Have you ever thought of that, just we? Who is this we? This is the we that our position is that we have offended a holy God. That's who we are. We have offended the holy God. Sin is an offense against the holy God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And as I mentioned to you before, when Adam and Eve sinned, something happened to you and to me. It's passed on to you and me. We have been eternally separated from a fellowship with God. And our position is that we are dead. Spiritual dead and physical death. There is no way that there can be an appeasement between me and God when that fellowship has been distant or separated. We have offended the holy God. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, it's on your screen there, Paul said this, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the rulers of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is not at work in those who are disobedient. All of us all lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thought. Like the rest, listen to this one, like the rest, we were by nature deserving God's wrath. That is our position. Can you imagine if the wrath of God was poured upon you? We deserve that. That is what we deserve. God's wrath. We are on our way to a terrible, terrible encounter with the Holy God because we have offended God. That's what sin does. Sin is an offense against the Holy God. We have all sinned. Here's the second part that I pull out of this verse. Not only the fact that we have offended the holy God, but look at the next one. In him we have redemption. Who is that in him? That is Jesus Christ who paid for our offense. 
Romans chapter 8, 5 verse 8, it's been already mentioned that God demonstrated his love towards and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He paid the price that none of you and me, we cannot pay. But somebody got to die. Legally, it's you and me. But God has other ideas. And the only way that an appeasement can be made is somebody got to die. So instead of you dying, he sent his only son. So that that death, because only death can bring an appeasement between me and God. So somebody got to die, Jesus did. For you and for me. And here's the third part of that verse. So first, you have offended God. I have offended God. Secondly, our offense became a reason why Jesus died on the cross. And here's the other beautiful part of that verse. God, the offended one, forgave us based Is it based on the sin that you have committed? How did he forgive you? God is the offender, the, the offended one. We are the offenders. And God forgave you. Was it based on how gross the sin that you have committed? Listen, sin is sin, right? But he forgave you, the offended one forgave you based on how big his heart is. Period. Can you imagine if he forgave you like on some kind of a scale system? Oh, you, 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 you too bad. You're a murderer, too bad. That, that. Can you imagine? And I love that part of this verse because it, it demonstrates to you that it is the one who was offended that issued forgiveness. You have to embrace it. It's done. The lamb has overcome. But as human beings, that we like to fight for our own rights. We, we, we like to do whatever we want to do. And you know what? She, she did this to me. I'm, I, I'm expecting her to, to, to come to me, kneel back to me and say, but no. It's the one who was hurt that initiated forgiveness. If you are married here, let me give you just some suggestion. I've been, I've seen hundreds of couples in my office. I think that there is some of those issues that they face that could have been dealt in five minutes rather than $5,000 later. Or even more. Do you know why? Because the two cannot come to the place she did that to me, he did that to me. And I'm waiting for him to crawl back. What I'm listening, what I'm hearing, what I'm understanding here is this. It's the one who was offended. That took the initiative to say, I forgive you. You offended me, but I forgive you. Take that to heart. It helps you deal with the issues. Because it's in human nature. I was hurt. You hurt me. You did this to me. I expect you to come to me. But the offended one said, I did. I love that what he said. Let me just put my glasses on. This is what he said. I love this. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he what? That he lavished. 
on all of us. Again, he did not forgive you based on how grossly the sins that you have committed. He forgave you because his grace knows no limit. The offended one forgiving the offender. Wow, that is a powerful thought. And as a result, look at verse 4 and on in Ephesians chapter 2. But because of his great love for us, I love that but. Can you imagine if they didn't put the but there? We have no hope. Because before the but, there was all of this that we are deserving God's wrath. And then in verse 4 it says, but, because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made you alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved and God raised us up with Christ, seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness that he has lavished upon you. For it is by grace undeserved that you have been saved through faith it's not of yourself it is the gift there's so many gifts in those verses that God has showered upon you you are loved there is kindness that is poured upon you there is mercy that there is grace once you were dead in your sins, you have been offered these gifts from God. And most importantly, your sins have been forgiven because of God's rich grace that he has lavished on you. So experience his forgiveness. The virgin will be with a child, Matthew 1.23, and will give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, as we say, son, which means God with us. That's an incredible name. God with us. It's life-changing. If you appropriate it. But the question is not only that God with us. And that is great. But my question to you. Are you with God? Because to be with God. You have to do a few things. Let me give you. How do you embrace God's forgiveness? Here's the first thing. Recognize the fact that you need God. Nothing you can do to change that situation. Our destiny is eternal death. By the way, when you come to know the Lord, when does eternity for you start? You, 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 don't, you, you don't wait till you get to heaven for your eternity to start. When you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, your eternity to start right then. And you move forward. So recognize your need. For God. Secondly, admit that you have sinned. Repent. Then turn from your sin and ask for his forgiveness. Do you know the best gift for Christmas that you can give yourself? The best gift you can give is knowing that you have been forgiven by God. Absolutely. For this is the reason. If the season count for anything in your life, this is the season to understand and to experience I have been forgiven by God. And go live a free life. Forgiveness and freedom. It's like a twin. Some of us are Christians, but we are still tied down. And you have never felt the freedom in your life. But forgiveness equals freedom to live. No more guilt. No more condemnation. You're free. You're free. And we come to the Lord. Because this is the season to understand that Jesus means the Lord saves. He saved you from your sins. That's the first forgiveness to embrace during the Christmas season. Here's the second one. And this is, this is a little difficult, but I gave you the first one first because then from there, we flow on to the next one, forgiving those who hurt you. Man, this is a, a pretty tough part. As we, that's our last point. Forgiving those who hurt you. 
And maybe there should be a third point for giving those that I heard. <laughs> Christmas can be a very difficult time, and unfortunately, as we grow through life, we often have times that we experience some of the pain that life can deal with us. We experience pain, as I mentioned before. There's a lot of painful, hurtful people in this world. In our own community, Floyd Minster, we have people who are experiencing financial difficulties. We, well, there's a lot of hurting people around. It's not only in the world scene. But Christmas can be a very difficult time. I am reminded of the story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 36 and on. That's a story of, man, it was a story of brutal pain. His brothers did not like his attitude. They decided that they were going to rough him up a little bit. Actually, they wanted to kill him. But end up selling him to slavery. From that time on and years to come, here is a guy. He's a young fellow. Hadn't done anything really significantly wrong. But somebody who feared God. Watch his life painfully going down the tube. Year after year. Pain. Pain in his life. The hurtful thing about it is, who caused the pain? His own family. But God was with Joseph, the scripture tells us, and at the right time, God put him second in, in charge of all over Egypt. The day finally came when Joseph found himself face to face with his brothers who had betrayed him. Sometime it really is not the people far from us who does damage. It's those that are close by to us. People that we know. People that we associate with. The one can cause incredible harm and pain. But how do you deal with that? So finally the day came when he came face to face with Joseph. Here's what, look at that in Genesis 45, verses 1 to 3. And as you look at those verses, I can just picture and imagine that with me. See the pain on the face of this man. And maybe some of you can relate. Let me read it. He's face to face with his brothers. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants. And he cried out, have everyone leave my presence. Get out of here. I want to be alone. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. He wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him. Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. It's interesting he didn't say, why did, you did this, why did you do this to me? Do you know what's the next question he said? Hey, is dad still living? Wow. Is, is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Do you see what's happening in this account? Joseph just let it loose. Years of questions, years of pain. Why did it happen to me? Why not somebody else? Years of regrets, years of hurt, just pouring out of this man's whole body. Then out came beautiful. This is then out came some words of reassurance and forgiveness. Listen to this. I'm not saying that this. Let me stop you and say that 
It is difficult now for me to deliver this because I, 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 I'm not here to stand before you and say it's easy. It is not easy. Especially those that hurt you right from around you that you know. It's hard. So don't ever say, well, preacher, man, you, you know, you, you're in this cocoon. You, I have my pain, I can tell you that. I have to struggle with God. I have some sleepless nights. I have those dark nights of the soul. That I have to wonder about my own calling, about my own ability. So I'm not saying that, that because it's easy. I'm saying this because this is what the word of God is instructing us to do. And look at Genesis chapter 15, chapter 50, verses 19 to 20. Here's what he said. Don't be afraid. Aren't those beautiful words? Did you know that these are some of the first words at Christmas? When the angels came to the shepherds? Do you know what he said? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended for, you, for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. The saving of many lives. What do you do when people hurt you? I suggest the following biblical choices that I trust that you will make. The first one is pray for them. Pray for them that God, God, would you heal the hurt on that person? Because if somebody is hurt by my action, that means I'm probably be hurting myself. I, I, I read a quote. Somebody said, hurt people hurt people. And it is powerful. Pray for them. Luke chapter 23, verses, uh, verse 34, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive Herod. Right when I was born, he tried to kill me. <laughs> and then on towards when my disciples, at the time when I was standing in front of trial, that I look around, where are they? They're gone. So, Father, forgive them. For they don't even know what they're doing. Pray when you've been hurt. Even though you don't feel like it. Pray. Secondly, choose to forgive. I know it's easier said than done. Listen to this sobering verses in Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 to 15. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. This is quite a sobering verse to me. But here's the thing. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, hear me out. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, forgiveness is not an elective course. It's not an elective course. Because if you are anything like me, I can forgive one time. You did it to me the second time, I'm going to write you off. I'm not going to attend your Christmas party. I'm going to cut you off from my will. That's the reality. And somehow Jesus knew that this kind of after effect discussion was going to come out when he said those words. Then one day he had the discussion with Peter. In Matthew chapter 18 verse 22 says this. Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus looked at him and said, no, Peter. I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. What does that mean? It's not about the number that matters. 
It is the fact that Peter, I have forgiven you with all unlimited resources that I have forgiven you. I have forgiven you, Peter. Unlimited forgiveness. So you must do the same. Not once, not twice. Forgive. Just forgive. The question is, is there anyone you have not forgiven yet? You know, in my own dark night of the soul, quietly in the darkness of my room, I struggle with that question. How do I forgive? And every time I struggle with that question, you know, the pictures of people came in my mind. People that have hurt me. And it seems like every time those pictures come in my head, there's this overarching principle that just clouded these pictures. It is, was a reminder of the fact that God has forgiven me. So I keep reminding myself every time that these pictures pop in my head. Ta, I have forgiven you. And so what I'm saying is, in order for me to deal with those issues, those areas where it's so difficult to forgive, I always have to remind myself, God's unlimited forgiveness has been showered upon me. And who am I to be the keeper of those forgiveness and not dish it out? So remember that. Colossians chapter 3 tells us, bear with each other, forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Hard, yes, but you've been forgiven. And then thirdly, some of you from the Filipino culture, I always admire your culture in this way. Thirdly, not only to choose to forgive, not only to pray, but ask God to bless them. Pray for God to bless these people. But here's what happened when you pray like that, that God bless the person that have harmed me. Here's what happened, because then your prayers may or, or will affect that person that you're praying for. But I tell you what, your prayers will, I promise, will affect you. It is more about your growth than what God will do with your prayers on that other person. You cannot pray for someone else without God doing a work in your heart, and that is a fact. You will grow through that process. Romans chapter 12 tells, tells us, don't take revenge. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, what do you do? Feed him. If he's thirsty, what do you do? Give him something to drink. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Love your enemies, Jesus said in Luke chapter 6. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Here's that word. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. And I want to close with these concluding remarks. I want to go back to the story of Joseph. Understand he just forgiven his brothers. And here's the beautiful thing about that forgiveness and that account of forgiveness that he did give to his brothers. I don't think that he had any idea what awaits on the other side of this forgiveness that he has just issued. Because when you read chapter 50 of Genesis, was where he revealed himself, he said, you know what, this is all God's doing in my life. He did this so that the saving of many lives. Then you open the book of Exodus, right after the book of Exodus, you find Based on that forgiveness in chapter 50 is the birthing of a new nation of Israel. It flows out of that forgiveness in Egypt. That was what awaits Joseph on the other side of forgiveness. I tell you this. You stand up and forgive. You never know what God has in store for you on the other side of that forgiveness. It could be a miracle that it will take place in your life. Wow. 
and I'd look at this and bring it down to the Christmas story, I see the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1. Link back to that act of forgiveness that Joseph did in Genesis chapter 50. Resulted in my salvation. What does God have for your situation on the other side of forgiveness? This could be the best Christmas for you ever. Because a miracle awaits you on the other side. If you stand up and begin to forgive. This is the season to embrace the forgiveness of God, ladies and gentlemen, and live a life of freedom. I love Romans chapter 8 verse 1. And I close with that. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who have embraced the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Absolutely not. You will no longer live in guilt and condemnation. You're free to live. So live a life of freedom, ladies and gentlemen, because you've experienced his forgiveness. He came into this world not to condemn you, but to condemn the sin and not the sinner. He came to condemn you, the sin and to shine his light of love and truth to a dark world. So don't figure it out. Let God come. Bow your heads, let's pray. Father, as we take a deep breath, we are reminded by the song, Emmanuel, Christ has come, he's here with us. He became flesh and he dwelled among us. He left the crib and went to the cross. You've done it all for us. You're just asking us, Lord, this is the season to be significant in my life. I need to embrace your forgiveness. And so that all other forgiveness will fall in place. Because Christmas will be so crazy, Father. If at the end of the day, I don't embrace your forgiveness to begin with for the sins that I have offended you with. So help us, God, during this season. And as the team come and finish our time together, Father, honor and glorify yourself through the word and through our response to what you will have in store for us on the other side of forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Todd preached a very powerful topic called forgiveness and we just heard that forgiveness can be received through Jesus Christ and I do not want to close this service with that kind of a topic not offering people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior so I'd like for us to stand together if you are not sure whether your relationship with God is, has been restored because you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm giving you the opportunity today to receive Him. Pastor Taw said, it begins with you receiving forgiveness from God. The fact of the matter is, whether you accept it or not, you have offended God. I have offended God. And by nature, we keep offending God. But out of God's grace, he sent Jesus so that he, through him, we can be forgiven. That is grace. So if you're here and you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you haven't received the forgiveness of God, I want you to bow your head and pray this prayer with me. It's as simple as saying a prayer to the Lord and committing yourself to believing in Him and following Him. It's as simple as that, to receive the grace of God in your life. So if you haven't received Jesus, I want you to receive Him today. Let that be a Christmas gift for yourself, the gift of eternal life through Jesus, but also in celebration of His birthday. Let your life be a gift to Jesus. Bow your heads, and if you haven't, receive Jesus yet and you want to receive him pray this prayer after me 
Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, thank you that through you, I can be forgiven. Through you, I can have eternal life. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and make me a new person. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. I believe that you rose from the grave to give me eternal life. So today, I am now yours because I have received you as my Lord and Savior. Help me, God, to live my life for you beginning today, the beginning of my eternal life. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed, I'd like for you to let me know if you have received Jesus today. If you prayed that prayer for the first time and you're willing to say, Pastor, I received Jesus today, would you lift your hand up and just let us know that you have actually received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Would you do that? Would you do that? I've received Jesus today. I received his forgiveness. If you could keep your hand up, I'll be praying for you. Father, thank you for those who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior today. I pray that you will give them the assurance that they belong to you and that they have been forgiven. Thank you, Lord, that you have given them eternal life beginning now and that their lives will never be the same again because the joy of the Lord will be their strength the peace of God will guard them. The love of God will reign over them. And faith will be the manner in which they will live. For we are called to live by faith, not by sight. So thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you raised your hand, this is my simple request to you. Take um, a connection card, write your name, and just check the box there that says, today I received Jesus Christ. That's, that, that's an indication for us that you have received and we can pray for you and maybe we can help you in, in growing in your faith. So again, thank you for doing that. Your eternal life has just begun now. And we will close with a declaration of God's greatness, a declaration of God's goodness. We will sing hallelujah for the Lamb has overcome. Let's sing this together, church. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah.
desire of our hearts is to bless you forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for the eternal life that we enjoy in Jesus Christ. Because of that, we can enjoy life all the more. And we can see our problems and our trials as ways for you to grow us in our endurance and our strength. God, as we go and face this week, um, all, of, all of the days might have problems. Each day might have some cares of its own. But we know that we are able to overcome because we believe in the God who has overcome the world. And his name is Jesus Christ. And through him, we declare this victory. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you all. See you on Saturday worship experience or the Sunday interchurch worship experience. All right, God bless you all.